A digital signal processor, or DSP for short, will give us the control of every aspect of our music signal. This allows us to fully tune our car audio system for the best sound. Now typically we'll install a DSP between the source unit and the amplifiers, but today I have something really cool for you. What if the DSP was built into the amplifier. This would make our system require less wiring and less space and would also give us the ability to control time alignment and crossovers and equalization and all these other settings all in one convenient package. Well, Audio Control has released the first of their new D series of amplifiers, the D-4.800. This powerful four channel DSP integrated amplifier is truly feature packed. Let's take a look at how to install it and do a run through of all the features. So here we have it, the Audio Control D-4.800. This is a four channel 800 watt amplifier with DSP built in. But here we have the box and I know a first question that always comes to mind for a lot of people is how much power does this thing actually have? Unfortunately, I don't have access to an amp dyno, but I will tell you that Audio Control is a reputable company. They've been in the business for many years, and there are some videos already here on YouTube where some guys have put Audio Control amplifiers on the amp dyno, and they've exceeded their power rating. So this company is a company we can trust when we actually read the specs. You can see that there's no max watts listed. Everything is listed in watts RMS, which tells us these guys are legit. So 125 watts times four at four ohms, and 200 watts times four at at two ohms and keep in mind that you can actually bridge the channel pairs for a total of 400 watts bridged at four ohms. As I already mentioned, this has a full DSP built in. It's got channel summing, AccuBase processing, MILC source clip detection, and of course, speaker level and preamp inputs. Now don't worry guys, this is car audio fabrication and I know that you guys love seeing an in-depth dive into all these different specs. So we'll definitely be going into that in this video. Let's fire things up with opening this box here you can see that the box comes in this sleeve we can slide the sleeve away and once we actually flip this up and open the box first off we are going to have a USB cable that's right we can actually connect to this amplifier via USB on our computer in order to tune the amplifier this is a three meter long cable we're going to set that aside we of course have our instruction manual we have a quality control card here you can see that it's been checked off and signed by somebody at the factory. Within this little package here, we have an Allen key. This will allow us to remove the top plate of the amplifier so we can access the settings. And then of course we have the amplifier itself. The amplifier is well packaged, well protected. Remove this sleeve of plastic here. And here we have it. One last thing that was buried in the bottom of the box, we have the audio control guitar pick. And the reason they include this is it works really well for adjusting some of the different dials on the amplifier. Let's just do a quick double check of the dimensions here. It is in fact nine inches wide, about seven and three quarters inches deep, just over two inches tall, probably about two and an eighth inches tall. Now we could just talk about all the different features that this amplifier has, but I wanna show you guys a real world situation. So we're gonna act like we're actually installing this because because we're gonna be using the Car Audio Fabrication Integration Test Center. If you're not familiar with my test center, what I've done here is I have a factory head unit, I have a factory amplifier out of a vehicle, and this amplifier has a bunch of equalization already going on with all the different speakers within the factory system. So we're gonna correct that so that it sounds good on our new system. And we're actually going to be hooking this up to a car battery. Everything is powered by a car battery. So basically we have a full car audio system outside of the vehicle. I also have a RTA, which we can connect to the speaker wire leads and we can actually see what's going on electrically with the signal. So to start our quick rundown of installation, one of the first things we would need to do in a vehicle is actually remove this cover plate. I've loosened these two screws that allows me to remove the cover plate. And the reason we need to remove it is that gives us access to the four different mounting positions to mount this within the vehicle. It also gives us access to actually screwing down the different terminals for the power ground and remote turn on lead as well as removing these connections for the speaker wires and the signal wires. Now, some of you guys may have noticed right away that there's actually no dials on the top of this amplifier to adjust. That's because all of our settings are actually gonna be done internally when we connect to this using a computer. More on that later. So we've made sure that our battery terminals are disconnected. Let's just pretend that we've mounted this securely in the vehicle. The next step is we're going to attach the 12 volt power source, the constant lead. 
This wire terminal here accepts four gauge wire. Next, we attach our ground. The third connection you need to make is a remote turn on lead. In other words, something that's going to turn on with accessory power with the vehicle. But in this case, I'm not gonna be attaching that. That's because I'm gonna be using Audio Control's GTO, which stands for Great Turn On Technology, which actually monitors the high level inputs. So our speaker level inputs, it will monitor those. And when it sees a musical signal on those inputs, it knows to turn on the amplifier. If you were using the line level inputs, you would have to attach the remote in. Now, one more cool thing to note about that, if you are using the high level inputs in order to tell the amplifier to turn on, the remote in then becomes a remote out. So you could actually use this to then power on a separate amplifier. The next part of installation is sending a audio signal to this amplifier. So if we had an aftermarket head unit installed or something that gave us RCA line level outs, we could use these line level in connections in order to connect the amplifier. Now, if we're integrating into a factory system, it's more likely that we're gonna be using speaker level inputs. In other words, we're gonna connect the speaker wires out of the factory head unit or factory amplifier. We're gonna connect those directly to this amplifier. Now this amplifier solves a unique issue that we see a lot of times when we're integrating with a factory system. If you watch over here on the RTA, I'm currently playing pink noise on my factory audio system. And pink noise is a signal at all of the frequencies along the audio spectrum. So what we're gonna look at here is if I connect, this is actually the tweeter connection from the factory amplifier. And you can see what that means is we're only getting the high part of the signal. If we use this signal and we were trying to play a full range speaker, so something like a six inch speaker, we would only have the high frequencies on that speaker, so it wouldn't sound good. We wouldn't get any of the vocals or anything like that. If we look at the next channel on the factory audio system here, this is what is actually connected to the woofer within the vehicle. You can see here we have a pretty much full range signal up until the highs. The goal is we want to add this signal to this signal so that we have a completely full range signal. And we're able to do that within this amplifier. Once we get into the computer and we are actually tuning this thing, we can go more into detail on how we can actually sum the signal and send it out to these different speaker outputs. But for now, we're just going to make these line level connections. For a quick side note, there's actually six channels of high level input on this amplifier. I'm only gonna be using four. Next, I've connected my speaker wires to this connection. This is a four channel amplifier. So there's of course four channels of output. And I'm actually using 14 gauge speaker wire here. I had no problems putting that into this connection. I'm only going to be using the two speakers just for this testing application though, so we can go ahead and plug those in as well. The final connections that we need to make are for the USB, which goes to our computer so we can actually program this thing, as well as the ACR3. The ACR3 is this optional adjustment knob that we can install into the front of the vehicle. And what this will allow us to do is we can actually pick between different presets on the amplifier once we get it tuned. We can also control what we want this dial to do. We can use it as a master volume control or we could tell it to only operate on certain channels so we could basically use this as a subwoofer volume control as well. We're not going to connect these quite yet. So if you remember earlier I mentioned the GTO signal sense technology. I've made sure that I've switched that switch over to the on position. That's actually the only switch that's on top of this device. Now watch what's going to happen right now. My factory head unit is currently off. Again we do not have a remote in connected but check this out. If we go ahead and turn on the radio, you can see our power lights turn on here. And if you can hear it, we now have audio. If I put this on the ground and if I put this on the remote out, since it's now a remote out, you can see that we have voltage out. So this is where things really start to get unique because we can completely control the amplifier using our computer. So you can see we have a USB cable connected here connected into the amplifier. In the meantime, I've also connected the ACR3. Let's dive on in here to the computer. So when we first log into the software here and we connect the piece of hardware, we're going to have to type in our pin code. We can set this up later. By default, it's one, two, three, four. This allows us to lock out people if we want to, to prevent them from adjusting any of the settings. So since we're currently playing pink noise, you can see that on our front inputs, you can see that we have 
what looks to be like a full range signal. Again, over here, this is just our front inputs, which if you remember, that's what we connected channels three and four to. So you can see that we don't have some of the highs. And in fact, if we click here and look at our front high, we can see, okay, there's the rest of our highs. What's really unique here is we're actually monitoring that input signal to the amplifier. So what's nice about this is we can do some troubleshooting and see, hey, we don't have all of our highs. When we go over to the output view, we're going to want to sum the two together. That's coming up. Now, the first few things to notice here is that we can mute the input so that we're not necessarily using that input. That will help us for some troubleshooting if need be. We can also adjust the input sensitivity. We have some time alignment options here and notice that we can also flip the phase of each of our left and right channels as well as actually delaying the time. Now, as far as our RTA goes, this is something that we're going to have in both the input and output view screens. You can see that we can adjust how sensitive the RTA is, and we can also adjust the update speed. So right now I have it on fast. You could also do medium or slow, so you can more accurately see kind of what's occurring. I want to adjust my input gain here, and you can see I'm currently playing a one kilohertz test tone. I can adjust it up by clicking the arrows on the keyboard, and if we monitor the amplifier, you can see that we have the maximized outputs light come on right here. We're going to move on to the output view screen and here we can actually can control what's coming out of the amplifier. Now I want you to notice that we have one, two, three, four, so that's channels one and two on the speaker level outputs, three on four on the speaker level outputs, and you'll also notice that we have this line out button. The line output button is for these two RCAs here. We can actually connect RCA cables to these and send that signal to another amplifier. Why is that super unique and really cool that we can do that? Well, we can take essentially a quote unquote dumb amplifier that doesn't have the abilities to control all of its setting. We can actually send signal out of our DSP amplifier here from audio control and we can actually control all the different things that I'm about to talk about. So let's switch on over to output channels one and two again. Now what we can do here Here's our output summing. So these are our different inputs. So there it's off. You can see that we don't have any highs. I'm gonna turn on the front high. And what that's doing is it's actually summing and bringing in that signal from our inputs that we connected earlier. Now here we can control our output level. And what that's good for is if you wanted to level match between the front and rear speakers, or if we were running active between the tweeter and the front speakers, we could do so there. So moving on here, this button allows us to enable the ACR3. If we wanted to use it for a volume control, we would enable it on both channels one and two, as well as channels three and four. If we wanted to use it for something like a subwoofer control, we would only turn it on for the channel that goes to the subwoofer. Now we could also set our output to mono. That's something you'd want to do if you're using a subwoofer in a bridged application. We can change the phase 180 degrees and we can also link to output channels three and four. As far as crossovers go, we have the ability to select between a 12 dB per octave or a 24 dB per octave on both the low and high pass crossovers. And you can see we can use this slider to adjust our crossover or we can also key in an entry. Now, while I was making those adjustments, you may have noticed down here that we're actually seeing the output in this case. So before when we were seeing the inputs of what was going on, we're now seeing what the amplifier is actually sending out. So as I adjust the crossovers, you can see that we're limiting the output frequencies. Now here, you can see our ability to once again time align. So if we measured that the left front speaker was a little bit closer, we would key in that entry. Let's say that it's 20 inches away. And if the right speaker is a little bit further, let's say it's 50 inches away, this way the amplifier is going to automatically adjust for the time alignment. It's going to delay this speaker that's closer to us to center up the speaker's image. Next up, we have Audio Control's AccuBase technology, which is a patented technology that they've came up with. This basically allows us to compensate with the factory base roll-off that occurs in a lot of factory head units. We set a threshold in order to tell the amplifier when it should actually start applying the AccuBase, and then we can adjust the level, which is how much bass we actually bring back in to the circuit. If you find that you don't have any bass roll-off issues with your radio, you can just bypass this by clicking this button. 
For the final section of our output view screen, you can see that we have the ability to control a 30 band equalizer. Now, if you wanted to, you can make things a little bit more simple and change to 10 band, or you can switch to 14 band, which gives you a little bit more adjustability down in the lower frequency range. The goal here is to match a target response. Now, keep in mind that flat isn't always the best response. Sometimes we like having a little bit more bass, and sometimes it might sound a little harsh, so we might want to roll off the high frequencies here. And you can see that we're able to completely adjust and tune this amplifier. Now what's cool is you can see that we have a couple of different things here. We have the draw EQ button. This allows us to just drag our cursor and we can control the EQ. Next up, we have a bypass button. When we click that, it allows us to temporarily bypass all the settings that we're controlling with our EQ. So here's my favorite button here. This is the auto EQ button. If we click that, we're gonna get a warning message. We wanna make sure that we double check each of these things. We'll hit yes the program is automatically going to control the EQ. If we select yes, we want to accept the new settings. You can see what it's done is it's made an attempt to actually flatten out this signal. Now the way the auto program is written, it won't make too drastic of changes. So sometimes you might need to run it once or twice, but you can see now we have a much more flat signal. So something to keep in mind though, is that this is the electrical output signal. In other words, once you actually get into the vehicle, you would wanna use something like an RTA microphone in order to do final tuning. If we switch over to dashboard view, dashboard view allows us to see both the input signal, it allows us to see our new corrected output signal, and we can also control our EQ within here. But this dashboard view kind of gives us everything that we need to use all in one place. This makes it a little bit easier to control everything. The only problem is each of these screens is a little bit smaller, so you might want to switch back to the actual input view or output view. Now finally, once we've done all of our tuning, we're of course going to want to save it to memory. So what we can do is if we click and hold on one of the memory numbers here, we can save that memory position by selecting yes. The final thing to note about the program is that we do have the ability to actually save this whole tune to our computer. That way we could open it later if we wanted to and send it back into the amplifier. So let's talk about using the ACR3. Right now I have this set up to actually be a volume control. The knob itself has a nice tactile feel. It actually clicks. The reason that those clicks are important is you can see we actually have two LEDs here. If I depress the knob in for about a second and then let go, it turns red. And while it's red, if I actually adjust the knob, I can select between the different presets. And each click is one preset up. So right now I'm on preset one. So what I'm gonna do, hold the knob in, I'm gonna turn it and we'll go to preset two. And when I get to preset two, you'll see that the red LED will blink twice. Hold in, go over, one, two. So now I'm actually on preset two. Something that you cannot control to be differently between the different presets is the crossovers. The reason for that is actually pretty smart if you think about it. Your crossovers, if you were accidentally sending low range frequencies to something like a tweeter, you could obviously blow the tweeter really quickly. By forcing us to make the crossover settings the same for all presets, that makes it so that we won't accidentally blow something like a tweeter. So what are some of my final thoughts and overall impression about this amp? At the end of the day, this amp is super sleek. I really like the way it looks and for its size and the fact that it has a DSP built in, you really can't beat that footprint. The overall design is elegant and it's simple. And since we have this nice cover plate, if we wanna cover those indicator lights, we can do so easily or we can leave it off. Something else I really like about this is it precisely matches some of the other amplifiers that audio control has. Some manufacturers will change up the look of their amplifiers from series to series, but that's not the case with audio control. This D series amplifier looks very similar to the LC series, which is nice so that you have continuity throughout a build. Now, when you take into account the fact that this has a DSP built in, you really get an amazing value in comparison to having an amplifier and a separate DSP. And definitely don't forget that you have the ability to attach a quote unquote dumb amplifier to the RCA outputs from this amplifier and control that as well, control those channels with the DSP inside this. This is something that I'm definitely excited to have my hands on so that I can use it on a build in the future. For more information on this amplifier and where you can purchase it, check out the links down in the video description. And hey, if you're new here and you haven't seen some of my other audio control videos I've done in the past, you can check them out here on screen. My channel is all about 
about doing car audio reviews and lessons and build log videos. So if you like that kind of thing, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. And until next time, my friends, design, build, and install.